Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Wolfpacker Show. My name is Ethan McDowell. I'm your host, and I am joined, as I am every week, by Noah Fleischman. We're here for a special edition bi-week episode of The Wolfpacker Show. Usually about this time, um, we're diving into the film on NC State's next opponent. We're delivering a full scouting report, some predictions for you all. Obviously, that's not happening this week, so we're going to be Kind of, we're going to give our thoughts on the football team. We're going to talk about it a little, but um, most of the episode, we're going to, we're going to talk about some other sports. We're going to dive into a, a little bit of basketball. We're going to talk about some wrestling, some fall ball, baseball that um, Noah got a chance to check out this week, and uh, we're just going to kind of give you like an all-encompassing look at kind of like you know what what's going on right now around NC State. But before we do so, a quick housekeeping note: we're both writers for TheWolfPacker.com. That's NC State's site on the On3 network. Um, over there, we post feature stories on, you know, men's and women's basketball and football. We, you know, have the latest recruiting scoops for all of those sports. Uh, anything you could possibly want, NC State news-related, full game coverage and analysis for football, for men's and women's basketball, all season long, all year long, it's over on the Wolfpacker.com. And right now it is only $1.00 to join the website's premium message board and premium access to, you know, those recruiting scoops and those other, you know, um, exciting content items. Only $1 doesn't get much better than that. Go check it out. It's the wolfpacker.com. And, um, you know, we'll say hi, if you join and say what's up on our message boards, we're all on there. It's a fun community of Wolfpack fans. Go check it out. It's the wolfpacker.com. All right, let's get into it. Noah, this is the first week where we haven't really had to, um, you know, plan ahead for a game this weekend. We, we've kind of just been able to spend, similar to NC, how NC State has spent this week, we spent this reflecting. We've spent it reflecting on the first um, seven games of the season, thinking through where NC State has thrived, where they have struggled, and what needs to change for them to kind of, you know, get the ball rolling here and turn the season around. Um, they're obviously at four and three right now, right? So you, you have five games left, five games against um, three difficult, challenging home opponents and two road venues that are not easy to win at. So it's not a cakewalk of a schedule either. But um, I guess, Noah, let's just start off. Just what, What's kind of like the, the your, your vibe around this team? How are you feeling about NC State um, as we're sort of midway through the uh, four, 14 days off here? Yeah, you know, it's definitely an interesting team this year, right? They have wins over a decent Marshall team, and they've got, you know, a win at Virginia, which they're not the best ACC team, but it's a road win. So you take it, and UConn is UConn, but it's a win there. So some of their wins aren't terrible wins. They just haven't shown up against the big-time opponents with Notre Dame, Louisville, which Louisville was a very winnable game. They 13-10 to 10 loss. You have a basically, if you have an offense that can do something, you win the game. And then Duke, which was just the game I think that NG State wants to put behind them, a 24-3 loss, and and just West didn't go their way. And then, you know, Duke was able to take advantage of some explosive play. So I think it'll be really crucial down this final five stretch because they haven't played well against, you know, the premier programs that they've played, the teams that are ranked in the top 25. They open up next week with Clemson at home, who is on the outside looking in at the top 25. They're a team that's, you know, turn it around after their opening season, season opening loss at Duke. Um, And then after that, Miami comes to town. So this is going to be really big, you know, bye week going into those two weeks, because those are two big time games at NC State. If they want to, you know, turn the season around, you want to take at least one of them. At home, it's a perfect opportunity to do it. You're not going to Death Valley. You're not going to Miami. They're both coming to you. Sold out game. I assume NC State fans will be upset. They're going to come in and be loud and, and try to push this team to a win. Um, if they take one of those two wins, I think a lot of people will feel really good about this team. Um, but there's a lot of work to do. And that's what they've been doing this week. Dave Dorn on his radio show, you know, talked about a moment of reflection. You know, reflection is kind of the theme. It's been on their, you know, screens in the Murphy Center. It's 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 been everywhere. And they're trying to really hammer down on what went wrong that they can fix now. Because – there's things you're not going to be able to fix in the middle of the year. There's, you're not going to be able to create a whole new playbook and things like that. So they're just looking at what can they fix individually that will create a better team. And the other part is what have they done well that they can keep doing? 
Because at this point, you're not going to go make a new playbook. You're just going to take the plays that they've done well, expand on them, and, and do that, and throw out the ones that you haven't done well. Um, so we'll see kind of what this team looks like, you know, this week, you know, next week, I guess I should say. And, and you know, Dave Dorn hinted at a personnel change. We haven't heard much. I'm sure on Monday we'll kind of, you know, get a little bit more on that. But we'll see what happens um, between now and then. But I think this bye week is pretty big, not only with the games coming up, but if they want to just turn this season around and five games left, you only need two wins to get a postseason bid. I think it's doable. Um, it's definitely not going to be easy, but it's definitely doable for this team. Yeah, absolutely. And and the main part of that is you just can't go you can't go 0 and 2 over the next couple of games, right? Like you cannot go into this road stretch um, you know, standing at 4 and 5 and then at that point it is a scrap for bowl eligibility, right? You don't want to be there if you're NC State. So you you look at that and you're staring down games against um Clemson and Miami. You know, it, they're and it's kind of like two opposite tests, like right? Clemson may be the best defense you'll play all season. And them and Duke are probably like neck and neck, two really good squads. And um, then Miami, and shoot, Tyler Van Dyke might be the best um, quarterback in the ACC this season. So you have um, two legitimate tests. And the biggest thing you need is, man, Noah, you need guys to step up. Right now you have two guys that are just playing just at, at another level, right? playing at the level that um, NC State is, like, accustomed to, that um, the, playing up to the standard that this program holds. You have Kevin Concepcion on offense, who's just a playmaker at wide receiver, a game changer at that spot. But like Robert and I said earlier this fall, it can't just be him. People have to step up around him. I like what I've seen out of MJ Morris. I think he's looked solid over his um, first couple starts. But um, you, we need to continue to see – the team rally around him, more players step up and the receiver core and the backfield on the offensive line. Things just have to continue to improve around MJ Morse to give this offense the best chance to succeed. And so far we haven't really seen that yet. Um, and then defensively, I mean, um, Peyton Wilson talked about it. They need to play tougher and a, as a unit, um, you know, it, he wasn't pointing fingers, but he was saying like, Hey, we need to, we need to kind of kick it into gear here. Um, because it, you're you're in a spot right now where, I mean, he finished with 11 tackles against Duke. No one else finished with more than four. Like, I he had um, you know, I don't think anyone else other than Wilson finished with more than one solo tackle against uh, against Duke. That that can't happen. It needs to be a more collective defensive effort. And it's not like the defense is playing awful football. It's just NC State has a very high standard for it, and um. You know, I don't think they've quite lived up to what they want out of that unit yet. And uh, and you have the talent. You have, you know, Aiden White and Shaheen Battle are still two of the most talented cornerbacks in the ACC. I think, you know, they've both struggled in moments this year but are still having decent years. And then you have, um, you know, a really, really strong defensive line anchored by Davin Van, who I should probably group into those players playing up to the standard because he's having a great year as well. But kind of going off of that, Noah, let's each just pick someone, someone that um you're looking at coming out of this bye week where you're like, all right, I think these last five games, this player is really going to shine. This person is really going to take a step forward. And by the end of the season, we're going to be like, wow, this guy is one of NC State's MVPs of the 2023 calendar year. Yeah, you know, I'm kind of going to cheat. I'm going to pick two because I got two on top of my head that That's I can't fine. pick one. So we're going to pick two. One, And they're two young players. Freshman running back Kendrick Raphael, he's been hurt part of the year. I think he has, you know, some of the best talent in that running back room, can, can be a very explosive runner. I think he's a guy that they need to break out. Hopefully he gets more healthy over the bye week and, and they can use him more in the run game. He only had one carry at Duke for five yards. They get three catches, 19 yards. Some positive stuff out of the backfield with him. I think they'll continue to use him as a pass catcher. Give MJ Morris that that check down, just get rid of the ball and keep it moving, especially against Clemson, who has a very good, you know, defense. He's not gonna have a whole lot of time to throw the ball. Yeah. Um, and then I'll pick Terrell Timmons. They need another wide receiver to step up. Kevin Concepcion cannot do it all himself. Timmons is second on the team in receiving yards, but only has seven receptions. That's like seventh on the team in receptions. So I think more targets going his way this year. He's an explosive guy. He, you know, it seems like every game there's one catch of 20 yards or more that comes from him. Um, just kind of, you know, exciting that he is. So 
I think those two guys, they step up. This offense can take some of the the, the, the toll of it off of, you know, Casey's shoulders. I think it'll help, you know, overall just, just open things up for the playbook here. I think you're 100% right. I mean, before, um, you know, you, you joined this pop, this show, like I, I was telling Matt, our old co-host, um, just constantly, I was telling anyone who would listen that I thought Terrell Timmons was going to be um, the team's best receiver this year. I thought he was going to have a huge breakout season. And the talent is clear, right? Like he's the team's best um, deep threat on the outside. He can win a jump ball. He knows how to go up and high point a ball. And he has the speed to take a top off a of defense, right? So, you know, I, I, I agree. I think that is a great pick. And I think he is definitely someone who can um, take a step forward. And um, my pick, I'm sticking in the receiver room. I, I, I think there's there's a reason we're focusing on offense so much is the offense needs, you know, and it needs more firepower. And I think Juice Vereen is a um, person who can add that. He's someone who – Hey, I, I covered his recruitment extensively coming out of high school. I was a huge fan of his, a- admittedly. I saw him play live, and you know he, 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 he did everything as a senior for Havelock High School, um, and um, he, whether that was you know playing outside, inside, or even taking snaps in the backfield. I, I just loved his versatility um, as a tight end, wide receiver hybrid, and um, you know it, it just hasn't really like translated yet, quite yet to the college level. Um, you know, I think Wolfpack Nation was pretty excited when they saw him play against uh, Notre Dame, and he you know, broke out with that you know, four reception, a 65-yard day, right? Um, he played a, a season-high 38 snaps that day. Uh, Noah, since, since that game, l- let me read a snap count out. 13, 10, 0, 3, 0. Against the Fighting Irish, he was their best receiver. I don't like. I, I don't. I think that's safe to say. He he was he was getting open consistently, creating separation, making plays. Since then, I, I I don't I don't know why he's not receiving more playing time. Hey, we we don't know what he's looking like in practice, right? If if he's not playing well in practice, you know, um, then he's not earning playing time. Then coach and I is not going to play him. Um, Doran's talked about that, right? If you're not earning playing time, you're not you're not going to receive it in a game. So we don't know what's happening. That's leading to Juice's lack of playing time. But I think he is too talented and, um, you know, just too skilled of a, rece- of a receiver, tight end guy. You can play in that flex Y spot to um, – I, I, I think you have to see him get more snaps. you got to find ways to get him involved in the offense. Because, I mean, shoot, sure, he's, he hasn't been the best blocker this season. And um, he's, ha- he's had a couple drops. But he, he's a freshman. And, and, who, and who in the Wolfpack receiver core hasn't struggled? With, with drops or hasn't struggled with um with the occasional blocking mistake right i, I think it, it, it's time to kind of work juice more into the lineup here L- let's get him some more opportunities and um you know let him make those freshman mistakes because he's going to be a really good player for nc state for a really long time in my opinion and he is someone that i think you know maybe he earns his way back into the spot during the bye week and we see him make some plays um pretty often over the last final games here um, in that rotation with um, Julian Gray and Porter Rooks in the inside receiver room. All right. That's all for football talk, folks. Um, We're going to dive into some other sports, but before we do so, I want to say a quick thank you to our sponsor, Game Time. Game Time is a ticket buying and selling marketplace. Um, You can find it on the App Store. It's just the Game Time app. Or you can find it online on any web browser at gametime.co. That's not .com, it's .co. So, Noah, you might be asking, what makes this app better than the normal you know, ticket buying and selling marketplaces I use? Well, first of all, the app makes it super easy. Big fan of the app. My favorite part of it is that when you log on and you go and you look, you can see exactly the view that you'd be look, watching the game from in your seat. So I have it pulled up here on my phone. I'll hold it up if you're watching on YouTube. But um, you can see for the NC State UNC game, you can get a ticket for $110, and that's your view. It's pretty cool. Um, it, it, it's a pretty cool feature. You know, it, it takes um, you know, a step out of the process of buying tickets and a seat you know you want to watch from. You don't have to go to another side and look up a seat view. I love that. And um, you know, they have tickets till till kickoff, till the first song at a concert, um, till the tip off of a basketball game. Um, I buy my tickets at the last minute, so it's the perfect app for me. Um, if you want to go check it out, um, use code WOLFPACK. It's all caps WOLFPACK. 
for $20 off your first purchase. All right, Noah, let's dive into some other sports here. Um, I, I know you you got to see a couple of fall baseball games um, th this week. Just kind of what did you see from um, a pack baseball team where um, if, if you're paying attention, Wolfpack fans, there, there's some there's some positive buzz around this squad. There's some excitement around this group. So, so no, no. What did what did you see out of um the Wolfpack baseball program this week? Yeah, I saw him play. You know, two games against Walter State, um, a community college just outside. You know, in Tennessee, who came down in a day trip, played two games, went back. You know, Elliot Avent, the coach of NC State, was really appreciative of them coming down and back in a day, played two games. So it's tough on the body for for anybody. Um, they play well. I mean, they won both games against them that I watched. Played a lot of people. It's what you do in fall baseball. You know, pitchers aren't going to throw really more than two innings. Get a lot of arms out there and people. Um, Sam Heinfeld is a pitcher who, you know, he looked really good. He's a guy who's batting an injury before the fall. He came out two innings, six outs, four strikeouts. Pretty good day for him on the mound. He started. I mean, Garrett Pennington is a Wichita State transfer who he's got a lot of power. He'll play first base this year at NC State. He hit a, a homer to left field that off the bat was measured at 111 miles an hour. So crushed it. He's just got a lot of power and hand pop. So those are the two guys that stood out. The event, you know, they did, they went 4 0 this fall. They played two games against Duke as well. He just wasn't happy, I, you know, with the focus against Walter State. You know, pitchers had a lot of walks. There was a couple of errors in the field. Wasn't happy. He told us after the game, you know, something they need to clean up. There's a lot of work for them to do. Well, luckily for him, they don't have a game for another, you know, four months. So we'll see if they can, uh, they can get that going, which I'm sure they will. So other than that, you know, baseball is good to see. And, you know, they're done with that. And they've got a couple more days of practice before they wrap things up before, you know, spring rolls around. Absolutely. And, and that same day that you were going to baseball, um, I made my way over to Reynolds. I was, um, you know, going to do a couple interviews for our magazine, which uh, I'll use this opportunity as a shameless plug. Um if, if, hey, if you know the Wolfpacker.com, you probably know the Wolfpacker. It's an institution. It's been running, um, you know, 40, for 40 years. Uh, Stu Coleman started that thing in 1980-something. Um, it's a great magazine. It, it's, you know, full with all of the, um, you know, Wolfpack news you could ever dream of. This this week, we've been working on the basketball preview, which has been really fun. Go, You can buy it online. Go check it out. And um, ob obviously, it'll also be, um, you know, all around Raleigh, really. So you can find yourself a copy, go get a copy of the Wolfpacker. Um, but I was at Reynolds um, to talk to a couple of women's basketball players. This is a you know bounce back year for the pack. Um, you finished 20 and 12, nine and nine in the ACC. Shoot, um, no, that's not a bad season. Not in the best conference for um, women's college basketball. That's not bad at all. But it, it's, it's not NC State standard. Like this is a team that um, they were in the Elite Eight in 2021 they had won three consecutive acc tournament championships they consider themselves one of the nation's elite programs they are one of the nation's elite programs but they didn't look like it as much last year so i was interested i went down um you know to well, we're working on a feature on sanaya rivers she'll be on the cover of um of this month's magazine spoiler alert along with casey morsell from the men's team but um I, I talked to her and I talked to Mimi Collins. So there, it's two transfers, right? They're both in their second year with the pack. And we kind of talked and no, I'll tell you, there's a, there's a different vibe, different vibe around the school. Um, I think um, as Sanaya told me herself, like I, team chemistry, team bonding was just a little bit lacking last year. And I don't think they were as close as, um, you know, Sanaya wanted that group to be. And now that, um, you know, the, the six-one guard, she's a she's a junior now, and she's taking on a leadership role. She's she's having the team hang out together. They're you know celebrating each other's birthdays together. They're going to volleyball games. They're just spending quality time that's going to translate to the court. And um, you know they they brought in you know, six new scholarship players on this team, four freshmen, two transfers. So so that'll be interesting, and um, we'll see how it all gels. And um, a big part of it, and I cannot overemphasize how big this is, is it sounds like from talking to Sanaya that they're healthy. Like, oh my gosh, last season it got tough. They were playing, you know, a seven-person rotation. It was it was brutal out there. But um, it sounds like they're healthy. You know, I, I think um, you know, ten or eleven of those scholarship players this season could contribute. 
I, I think it's a really, really strong freshman class headlined by Zoe Brooks, who um, was the fi a five-star point guard, number nine recruit in the country. Um, I'm not expecting her to come in and like, you know, be like an all ACC player immediately, but she has that type of potential moving forward. Absolutely. So I'm excited about this women's basketball season. We're about a few weeks from getting started there. But um, if you want to read more about it, go get a copy of the Wolf Packer. We'll have stories on the site over the next week too about it. And um, yeah, it's exciting stuff. Um, and to kind of, you know, round out that discussion, Noah, you also talked to um, some members of the wrestling program, another team, you know, just consistently um, the best team in the ACC. They're national title contenders every year. Um, another team with, high expectations going into this year. Noah, when you talk to the wrestling program, just kind of what, what did you hear from um, those guys? Yeah, they've been contenders for national title, you know, the past five, six, seven years. But now I think they think, you know, it's a reality. Like they're capable of winning it this year. That's kind of the message is, you know, they're focused. Of course, it's a very long season. That doesn't come till March in Kansas City, but – they think they have a shot at it. They've got six wrestlers ranked in the top eight in their weight class, you know, preseason. And, and you know, that's a good good spot to be in, um, you know, early in the year. Um, they have some quality duels on the, on the schedule they're excited for. They don't have their first home match until February. So a lot of stuff on the road, a lot of travel for them. But, you know, I think they're excited because they, you know, when they come back to Reynolds, Virginia Tech will be here. Ooh. North Carolina, I believe, will be at Reynolds too. So big, big home duels when they when they do come back to Reynolds. Uh, but they're excited, um, and I think that this is a year they, they have a good shot. You know, I think a national champion is on this team individual at least. You know, I think that they, they have a shot at winning some individual titles. They haven't won an individual title since 2018, so this year is a, a prime year to do it. Um, and they've got a lot of veteran leaders as well. So. It's exciting time for, for, you know, wrestling the five time ACC defending champs probably make it six this year, just with how much talent they have, you know, back on their roster and, and they all seem excited and ready to go. Awesome. All right, folks, that's pretty much it from us today. Uh, it's, you know, quiet week, but um, it, it's about to get real loud. I'll tell you what there's um, the staff is active on the recruiting trail right now for football. So I'm expecting some news from there over the next few weeks. I'm expecting, you know, basketball is going to get real busy. It's almost crossover season. And Noah will, and I will be bringing you comprehensive coverage from both basketball teams and the football program all fall. So go check it out on the wolfpacker.com. We'll be back on the Wolfpacker show on Thursday. No Sunday show this week um, since there's no game. But um, we'll be back next week. And uh, we'll be here to you know talk through the Clemson matchup, talk through news and notes from basketball media days, which are next week. Um, it, it'll be a really fun show. So um, you know we'll, we'll see you back here in a week. Thank you so much for watching. Check us out on thewolfpacker.com, and uh, we'll see you soon.